Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. It is cold here in Arizona in January. It's crazy, we're doing this polar vortex thing right now all across America and it's freezing everybody out and it's ridiculous. So, I'm gonna stay inside, I'm gonna build me a tape measure Yagi and hope y'all come along for the ride. So I didn't invent the tape measure Yagi, I just wanna build one and I like building stuff and I like sharing builds with you and sharing some build notes with you. So I will have a whole bunch of parts for you, check this out. We've got it in the Amazon shopping cart already. What does it come out to total? $71.34. Your price might be different because Amazon likes to change prices on the exact same product depending on where it is that you're getting them from. But what you need is a cheap tape measure. I put in this BNC pigtail, but in the description down below, I'll have links to all of this stuff and I'll include a PL259 pigtail and a SMA pigtail. And the SMA pigtail is pretty cool because it's male on one end and female on the other. You cut it in the middle and then you have whichever cable you need for your radio and half a cable for another project, which is kind of how all of these cables are gonna work out. This BNC that I have here, I'm gonna have half a BNC cable left over at the end. Actually, I did mine on SMA, but shh, you'll find that out later anyway. You're gonna need some hose clamps. You probably, if you're like me, you probably had enough hose clamps laying around. So you're gonna see some dirty, ugly hose clamps that are the wrong size in my build because I had some laying around. No need to buy any of this stuff if you have it laying around. I'm sure the hardest thing you're gonna to have to source is this PVC T piece because it's not really, it's not really a plumbing fixture. It's just something that they make because PVC is cool to make stuff out of. This was 3D printing before 3D printing was a thing. The three foot of PVC, you might actually have some of this left over. These T pieces, you might have some of these left over. Electrical tape, tools, whatever. A lot of this stuff you probably already have on hand. But let's get back to the build. This website, I will leave a link to it in the description down below. This is what I used to make my build. And he's got all of the details on it. So it's supposed to have 7.3 dB of gain. I got no way of proving that one way or the other. It's just, it either works better or it doesn't work better. But the point of this is A, have a fun build and B, use it for fox hunting. So I'll talk about some tips on the fox hunting side of things. Let's see. There is this gamma match here, this this hairpin match, and kind of because it looks like a hairpin. It's it's hiding behind me. Hang on, let me get myself out of the way. Let's start over there. There is this gamma match here, this hairpin match here, because it kind of looks like a hairpin. You see how I just like rolled with that, started right over? You guys never even knew the first part happened. This helps out with your SWR, and with the tape measure pieces being in a hose clamp configuration, you can move them out, move them in kind of help that you can change the length of this hairpin match it doesn't matter what kind of wire it is it just matters that there is that little bit of a hairpin going on between there or leave it off entirely because i've seen that happen as well i guess it kind of depends on your use case if you need absolutely pinpoint precision swr then go for it use all the tricks in your toolbox to to make this thing happen and if you're just really trying to do fox hunt type stuff with this then all you need is to have a good receive antenna. And this thing is a fantastic receive antenna. Down here, he's gonna give you all the sizes. I'll show you that on the bench on my side. And then we're gonna put it all together and we're gonna make it happen. This here is the cool part about Yagi's. This is what makes the magic happen. This has a nice bubble of RF coming out the front of the antenna and a lot of rejection coming out the back. There's no signal of yours going out the back, which means there's probably no signal of theirs coming in the back. There will be some, depending on how strong the signal is, you'll be able to hear it from the backside. This is a very good antenna. So if you're using this for fox hunting, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get right up on the fox and it's gonna be everywhere around you, no matter which direction you point and you'll be able to hear it. So there are some tricks for that. Let's get over to the workbench and take a look at this thing. All right, I think it might be science time. Here is how this project ended up for me. This is all stored in portability mode, which you should do. First off, you should be using some safety gloves and some safety glasses so you don't poke yourself in the eyeball with this stuff here. And what I did is I folded it back in for, for portability's sake. But uh, I taped over the ends so that the sharp ends won't poke me on, on all sides. You can see it on, on here and you can see it on here. This was just some leftover electrical tape. I used a plain old pair, oops, I used a plain old pair of tin snips. When I put it together, these things move just a, just a little tiny bit at a time. I put a little mark there to indicate the center of where it goes. And like I said, these are some, some leftover hose clamps that I had laying around and used those. If you want to, you can cut these pieces with a hacksaw or a sawzall or a band saw or any kind of saw that you have. You can see mine's kind of crooked. If you have one of those fancy PVC cutting tools, it makes this thing a breeze. 
these lines here are where I have decided that it needs to go deep into the collar, and that's where I bottom out. That's where I stop. Once you get it built, it's fairly obvious. The piece with the T on it is going to be your end, and you want the longer piece towards the end. And so when I put that in, there's my, there's my line telling me where to stop pushing, and then your driven element goes next with your hairpin match on it. And that goes into where I have drawn my line. And then what I did was I sanded off some of the, the paint, the enamel on the tape measure and separated out the shield and the braid on my coax and got out my, this is stranded wire that I had laying around from another project and got all of those pieces and put them all on together. So this one here is your shorter stub and I have shoved that all the way in to that line that I talked about. And again, don't, don't judge me on my leftover hose clamps that are way too big for this project. Your last bit is what's called your reflector. And the reflector we put onto the end. And again, we go up to that line. And then what I had left over here was whatever piece of that PVC pipe was left over. I could only get this in a three foot length. And so this becomes your handle. You need enough to get it done so like you could go that short if you wanted to, but I don't like to cut stuff. So I just left mine at the whatever length was left over and I put my call sign on it because my kids put their call signs on theirs. And then that goes on in there. And this one here, I don't have any line on at all because this, this is a handle. It kind of doesn't matter. Let's go outside and take a look at what this looks like. And I am braving the polar vortex for you. And this is the tape measure Yagi that we just talked about inside. So like I said, I fold in the elements on the end so that they are out of the way in storage. And then they fold out and there you go. So the way this works is this one here up top is considered a director. And this one here is considered your driven element and that is where your coax attaches. And this one down here is considered a reflector. So the signals are supposed to aim in to your dipole antenna that you have and then be rejected on the back side back towards your main antenna and if you're coming at it this way with your rf this is supposed to create a block that stops it from going here all of it works well but it doesn't work 100 percent perfectly because you know rf doesn't follow the laws of physics as much as we would like it to so from here i can hold this and i can have my radio in my hand next to me here and I can kind of aim around and listen for the signal. And if my radio has a signal strength indicator, I can see where it gets stronger. As I get closer and closer, I can fold these guys in to attenuate the signal by having a not so good antenna. And I can fold them in in any way that makes sense and helps. And another one of the cool things about having this be a tape measure is that if I hit something as I'm walking through, the elements just go out of the way. So I don't have to worry about them. And it folds up nicely for storage into the tiny little bits of pieces. Excellent stuff. When you get up really, really close, this antenna will pick up that signal from everywhere around it. I don't know why I'm trying to take this apart right now. So what you can do is you can tune your radio ever so slightly off of frequency in order to make that easier to find, less noisy and kind of narrow it down. You can even take the antenna off entirely. You can put your rubber duck back on and you can use your body to block the signal from, you know, like it might be behind me and I can't hear it. So I'll turn around and I can hear it some more as I bring it back into the rf sphere of my radio. So cool stuff. Lots of really neat things out there. If you can find a fox hunting group in your area, you will have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, sometimes it's called radio direction finding as well. So you might use that as a search term. Have fun. Well, that's the end of that build. It is a pretty fun, pretty easy build. It is something that I did with my kids a while ago. And then we went out and we did some fox hunting with them. And it's just a cool, a cool thing to have. You know, to say that you've done, to say that you've been there, you've done that, you're, you're one of the cool kids, you're in the club. If you want to get in the club, there are links in the description down below for the instructions and for all the parts that you need off of Amazon. Or go to your tool, tool bin, go to your parts bin and pick some out, or go to your local hardware store and pick some out. But have fun. That's the big thing. If you enjoy building stuff, then this is the channel for you. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers, so if you could click that subscribe button right down below the video, that would be awesome. And right next to it, there's a join video if you are so moved to support the channel, or even over on Patreon. Everything is welcome, and I appreciate each and every one of you. 
There's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.